the business of female arousal and why you may not even know that it exists. Though we live in the age of the little blue pill, though we're bombarded with $300 million worth of erection enhancement ads each year, the makers of the female equivalent say their commercials have been rejected by nearly every station in America. Is it a case of too sexy or too sexist? Ashley Banfield looks for answers in our series Modern Sex in America. It's become part of our national conversation. Things we might never have said on TV just a few years ago are now on every channel at every hour. Levitra is only for men healthy enough for sexual activity. Don't let erectile dysfunction get in the way. Seek immediate medical help for an erection lasting more than four hours. The business of sex has never been sexier. The ads for Viagra and the drugs like it are on during dinner time, during primetime television, and nobody blinks an eye because we just accept that it's okay to talk about men needing and wanting sexual pleasure and sexual function. But are we just as okay when it comes to what a woman wants? Maybe not. According to the Journal of the American Medical Association, more women suffer from sexual dysfunction than men do, 43% to 31%. With numbers like that, you'd think there'd be just as many ads on TV hawking products to help women. No. That's my long shot. <laughs> Enter Rachel Braun Schurl and Mary Wallace Yench, two women trying to change that. They run a company that makes Zestra, a product aimed at helping women who struggle in the bedroom. So how does it work? It's a patented blend of botanical oils and extracts that is topically applied and what it basically does is it increases sensitivity to touch so a woman feels deep pleasurable sensations. She feels them more strongly, she feels them sooner, she feels them deeper, she feels them more intense. But is it the magic pill? No, we wouldn't say it's a magic pill. But what it does <laughs> do is it really is the only product available today that women tell us works for them. Women's sexual dysfunction is not quite as easy to remedy as men's. There can be several problem areas like pain, desire, arousal, and satisfaction. Women are much more complex than men. We experience our sexuality in a context and men are much better at putting the blinders on. Once they get the blood flow going to their genitals, they can forget about everything else on their mind in most cases. Women find it much harder to do that. Zestra is a cosmetic, not a drug like Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra. Still, its makers have run two placebo-controlled clinical trials suggesting it's 70% effective. So why isn't it a household name? You'd think the ads would be right up there beside the people in the bathtubs. So when the moment is right, you can be ready. There does seem to be, at least on the part of some of the networks and the stations, a real sense of squeamishness about the topics. What is behind the pushback? They tell us that they don't do this category, and what we heard that that means, because clearly they are doing that category, is You mean there, with Viagra and Cialis? Yes is that I think there's some concern that they'll get pushback from consumers, that there'll be some sort of uproar, that people won't be comfortable with this message. The makers of Zestra say they've approached more than 100 network and TV stations only to have their ads wholly rejected by 95% of them. And many of those who've considered selling ad space have only done so with special caveats. We actually went back into our ad and took out literally the, any word sex, sexual, sexuality. Um, and arousal. An arousal. This is a product to right. sex arousal. and arousal. Exactly. How do you sell a product if you can't sell well, it? Well, even short of that, <laughs> we took the same ad back without that language, and they still told us they were not comfortable airing the ad. Do you find it ironic that uh, people are hearing about your product because it can't get advertised? <laughs> Absolutely. It's one of the most amazing things <laughs> about the media. We're getting media coverage because we can't get advertised. And lately, there's been a lot of coverage. But if it's a woman yeah. who might be aroused, then we can't yeah, show it. Allowed to talk. It's all natural, and it's touted as the female Viagra. Oh, wow. Zestra. Send you to the moon, baby. It's great. Send you to the moon, baby. <laughs> it seems so crazy to me that we can see an advertisement about a four-hour erection and all that goes with that, and we can't talk about women's sexual arousal. It is, to me, a sign of how close to the dark ages we still are when it comes to allowing women to feel entitled to and celebrate their sexual health. It's a little medieval, but yeah, it does sound like there's a, a big business discomfort with certain topics that pertain to women and their sexuality.
Brian Steinberg is the television critic for Ad Age. Zestra made it all so easy. In a matter of minutes, I was there. We showed him one of the Zestra ads. I haven't felt like this in years. Pretty PG. It's not that racy, no. Women are starting to talk about something. He says he's surprised at the resistance time. to Zestra. Wanting more sexual satisfaction. Especially during this economy. He admits broadcasters generally treat small companies different than the big ones, but says rightly or wrongly, the networks walk a fine line. Don't let erectile dysfunction get in the way. Viagra. Of trying to be everything to everybody. I think the topic matter is not as mainstream as people might think. You know, uh, people in New York and L.A. are probably very comfortable with this. Maybe someone in Iowa is not. And the networks appeal to everybody. But they're okay with Viagra? Not okay with the female sort I, of version of it? I'm not, you know, I, I don't disagree with you. I think maybe, maybe you know, again, male sexuality maybe more, you know, it's the stuff of Budweiser ads. KY Intense is pretty amazing. It's a uh, gel. It's all the more right? perplexing when highly it, uh, suggestive ads for sexual her. lubricants slide right into primetime TV. Proven to intensify female satisfaction. Cialis and Levitra even scored the holy grail, a Super Bowl ad. If a relaxing moment turns into the right moment, will you be ready? And it's not just TV putting up roadblocks to Zestra's ads. It's radio and internet, too. The popular website WebMD turned down their ad. Yet a viewing of just one WebMD page yielded three ads for Cialis. And Facebook scrubbed an ad after only a few weeks, telling ABC News ads cannot contain, facilitate, or promote adult products. Within a couple of weeks, we got a notification from Facebook that they were taking our ad down because they didn't cover things in this category and they had very specific guideline language. But at that same time, they had a KY Intense ad uh, advertising on Facebook. It's not as though the male erectile dysfunction drugs didn't fight their battles, too. In 2004, when Cialis and Levitra ads aired during the Super Bowl, there was a viewer backlash. But it was no doubt fueled in some part by Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction that same year. Nevertheless, those commercials did make it on TV, broadcast to the largest television audience of the year. What we have come to realize is that what they're really more comfortable with, what society appears to be more comfortable with, is male sexuality. When you first got into the business, did you have any idea that this was what, gonna, what was going to be the no. tough It would never part? have occurred to us. The we thought the hard part was going to be talking to our kids about <laughs> what we do for a living. <laughs> this, this wasn't on either of our radar screen, that we would have a product that would work and was safe, but we had to keep it a secret. Doesn't money talk? Hasn't yet. For Nightline, this is Ashley Banfield in New York.